Okay, let's get started. So um, I'm doing the intro. Uh, as I think everybody who's in here knows, uh, I'm introducing Matt Cheney, who is a longtime Drupal developer who believes it is Drupal's destiny to be part of the, to run a double digit percentage of the internet. He co-founded the San Francisco-based consulting firm Chapter 3 in 2006, where he spent several years building complex websites for some amazing clients and creating some of Drupal 5's first distributions, including the eJournal install profile for Stanford and the conference organizing distribution for NASA. In 2010, he co-founded Pantheon Systems, which provides freely available Drupal development platform helping tens of thousands of Drupal sites with their development and hosting, including many which run Drupal distributions. A uh, longtime contributor to the Panels University of Modules, Matt is currently the lead maintainer of the Panoply Drupal distribution, which provides panels-based page building tools out of the box and serves as the base distribution for many other Drupal distros. So there's the intro and here's the man. Um, thank you very much. And, uh, Obviously, I hope everyone's having a really good time at DrupalCon Portland. Thanks for staying late for this last session of the day. Um, as Dan or as, as mentioned, my name's Matt Cheney. I work at Pantheon, and one of my roles there is to try to make Drupal distributions rock. That I do believe that it's Drupal's destiny to run double-digit percentage of the internet, and I think distributions are the way that we need to get there. Um, as part of that work, I do, I do maintain a panoply distribution of Drupal that I'm sort of labeling as a base distribution. It's something that allows people to take a lot of common building blocks that, that have already been done, use that to sort of start their site development, and make a really high-quality Drupal site or distribution. That I think Drupal is a magic thing. There's a lot it can do. But if you download it off Drupal.org, you get this thing. And this is not what most people want. Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't think I'm like, you know, in my, I want websites that like this comes up as anything that's related to like my hopes and dreams that, you know, even though Drupal's great, we've got 21,000 and counting modules, we have 10 years worth of open source development, we have some of the smartest people I've ever met working on this stuff every day, that to the end user, to the site builder, that Drupal still is really limited, that it has a lot of confusing backend administration systems, and that when you're coming to build a website, you know, sometimes you need something really complicated, requires a lot of custom work, but a lot of times you just want something that feels like a, a website. This is open public, which is a great Drupal distribution, works for like local government, like higher level government, and when you download it, it is a, a website that feels like a website and you can start changing stuff around. You get some demo content, you actually have the ability to, to turn this live relatively quickly. And this is super important for site builders because you don't have to sort of like figure out how to do it, you just sort of modify the stuff that's already there. This gets helpful when you have common functionality you need. This is Commerce Kickstarter. This is an out-of-the-box e-commerce store. It's got product catalog, checkout, integrates with a ton of payment processors. It's very cool. And if you're building an e-commerce store, I'd much rather start with a demo store I can change some stuff in to make work than to try to like go back to that blue screen and say, how do I turn this into a store? Because Drupal's hard enough just to do some basic stuff, let alone all this site building. And, and that becomes really hard. And it's specifically hard, too, when you've got common branding and it's now requirements. Here's a, a version running a Drupal distribution. It, you know, from university, you have specific brand and style requirements. Like, can't we just have it look like that? And so instead of having to, like, figure out how to get all the CSS and styles to look the way that the site is supposed to, what if out of the box we couldn't just have these styles? And that's what people want. They want something really great out of the box. They don't want basic Drupal. They want something as close and as awesome to what they're going to end up having as not. And for a lot of the folks in the room are probably site builders who are responsible for making Drupal sites. Like your focus is on content and on making the pages and the experience that the people come to your website see. And that's why you want something that comes out of the box that actually is really great so that you can spend your time on the top of the stack working on really amazing, amazing content and amazing pages for the site instead of like struggling down in the plumbing. You want something great out of the box. And if you work for a large organization, you also want to get clone the box and have a lot of sites. 
And that's one of the things over the past sort of year that I've been working on um, at Pantheon with a lot of larger customers and, and just people in the Drupal world that they want to create a situation where you can spin up something or spin up a hundred of something and have a lot of different websites that all do really great stuff out of the box that have the right designs and the right functionality. And that's, that's very much what sort of Panopoly is, is trying to help with because this is a trend that all across this land, we've got Drupal distributions, you've got the Canadian government and related local and university folks in Canada have a distribution they're standardizing on to help with multilingual stuff. Um, NBC has an internal set of distributions for their work. That UC Berkeley has several distributions to run hundreds of university sites. You've got folks like Phase 2 that have you know, a huge number of different distributions run by a lot of people. Acqui has got a, a couple really great distributions. The Commerce Guys has the has e-commerce the e store. And individuals all over the place are working on distributions based on other distributions and stuff. And I see it, and I, I like work in the space a lot. I see new stuff all the time. And it's really, it's really powerful because I think when I think about a Drupal, we've got, you know, a pretty good community and a lot of sites. I mean, I think we're approaching um, uh, about a million, a million Drupal sites online. Um, but who knows um, how, how, how far it'll go. I mean, there's, you know, plenty of things cooler than a million Drupal sites. Um, and I think if we want to, want to get to a billion Drupal sites, if we want to be the platform that runs double-digit percentages of the internet, if we want to make it as easy to have a website it is to get a Facebook account, we need to work really hard to make sure that our foundation and our sort of platform technology that people use is really good. And we want to have a foundation for building distributions that if you're not like, if you don't have years of development time, you're just a university that wants to spin up a common looking site across your organization, you're a media company that needs to have a bunch of different properties. Or if you're a person that wants something that's easier than what you had to do build from scratch and you want to start a little bit higher, we need really great technology for distributions in Drupal. And Drupal 8 helps for a lot of these, a lot of these problems. Um, what I'm showing you today is Drupal 7, but I'm happy to chat about D8 afterwards or in the Q&A. But in general, I think the important thing, and this is where we really get into some of the Panopoly stuff, is that, is that building a Drupal distribution is really hard. For folks who have, have sort of struggled to make install profiles, myself included, figure out how features works as great as that is, and making sure that all the dependencies and all of the different libraries work to make a Drupal distribution, it, it's hard. And that's, and that's just before you start building a lot of general Drupal things you need. You've got to get your WYSIWYG and not only just turn it on, but you need it to be customized and have integration with different user roles. You can have different input filters. You want to make sure that you have a bunch of layouts that you can use for your site. You want to make sure you've got a be you know, better admin experience. You have to select a bunch of modules. And that like every time like folks in this room who are doing development build a site, you're doing a lot of the same things to get started. You're, you know, and I, some of you might have scripts or even your own distributions to do this. But to me, like, that's a lot of work that, that, and you end up sort of having to do every time. And when you're building a distribution, a lot of distributions have to, have to spend that time. So you have to make sure you're always making a really awesome WYSIWYG, always making really awesome layouts, always making admin improvements, just to even get to the point where you're actually going to build something really great. And so what Panopoly is, 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 is it's sort of an attempt to, to, to help people move up the stack. It's about saying if you're going to build a Drupal site, and specifically if you're going to build a Drupal like a set of sites, like a distribution, like don't just start by downloading Drupal and sort of starting from there. Look at something like Panoply that says we're going to obviously have Drupal core. We're going to have a bunch of Drupal contributed modules that we've looked at, reviewed, and integrated, and we're going to build some like higher level function on top of all of that stuff in a way that like it gives you a starting point. So then when you turn on something like Panoply. It doesn't just give you, you know, a, like no content and like not a lot of options to extend stuff. It, you know, still is a starter site, but like it gives you a lot of features, which I'll show you today out of the box. And if you're someone who's looking to do site building, great place to get started. And if you're looking to build a distribution, it's an even better place because it's super easy to get Panopoly integrated into your distribution. And you can have a lot of functionality like WYSIWYGs and layouts and admin improvements without having to really do anything but include a couple of modules in your make file. And that's where this kind of stuff is, is really valuable. And hopefully, like today, I can leave with you guys with an impression that Panopoly solves a lot of your base problems. 
It'll help you make distributions if you want. And it's the kind of thing that, like, I think can put Drupal into a, a sort of higher level and get more people using it because it won't require, like, custom PHP code to do a lot of stuff. Like, you can make, I'll, I'll make some today, some really great pages and stuff that actually you might, like, put on the Internet without having to do any code or even necessarily use the Drupal backend. So let's talk, let's talk Panopoly, let's talk features. So the first thing I'd throw out there is that Panopoly, like I mentioned, it's based on Drupal Core, it's Drupal 7, and it's also based on a bunch of modules that you need to do all the different things that we do. Here are some of the modules, some of the like, you know, more branded and, and unique ones that we include. It's not an entirely exhaustive list, but it's pretty close. And the idea is that these are modules that, for folks who turn modules on and off, this actually might be a really familiar list. It might look a lot like what you would install on a lot of your sites when you get going. And this is the kind of thing that, for someone who's sort of, you know, new to Drupal, having this kind of, like, stuff already there, already installed, already configured, and already tested to work together is really important. Because you probably all know about views, and by extension, you see tools because it's a dependency. But you might not use, you know, admin views or module filter, which are great modules that make your Drupal site a lot better. And that, you know, some of these, like, you know, more V8 kind of features or stuff that's a little more complicated, like search API, is actually super hard to set up. And having all of that already there and already sort of ready to go is a big deal. It's also cool because Panopoly keeps all these sort of modules up to date. So when you download the latest version of Panopoly, it already has all the modules with the right versions and any like sort of must-have patches included along with it. That makes it super straightforward. So when you're sort of doing your development, you want to update a module, you can just update the Panopoly distribution to the latest. And then you'll have all the modules and you'll be able to go on and, and do some really great stuff. And I've spent really about a year and a half working with a lot of module maintainers up here and writing a lot of patches to make sure all these stuff plays nice together and can be the kind of thing you guys can use to build sites and build pages without having to, to do a bunch of coding. And I think that's, that's really important. It saves people a lot of time. You turn Panopoly on, you install it, you get all these things. You've done really not a lot of work. And that's awesome. And that helps you. Feature two. Uh, layouts. So uh, every Drupal site needs a layout, and traditionally themes have provided a lot of these layouts, and that's fine. Themes are really great for a lot of things. One of the things that Panopoly does different is that it's based on panels as a, as a module, but you can use anything you want. It's not specific to that necessarily. But what's really great is that out of the box with Panopoly, you get 31 layouts that are all like cross-browser tested. They all have responsive CSS properties, and they're all able to be added, changed, and switched in real time on the site. And I'll, I'll demo some of that for you. Folks saw my talk yesterday on the panel. I gave some demos of how you can control your layout with Panopoly. But in general, this is a really great way to get started because you don't have to write CSS to do any of these things. You just get these layouts that are already there, and you can play with them and extend them. And, like, you know, I mean, you're going to run into use cases that have layouts that are different than this. And it's super straightforward to just copy the one that's closest, change some stuff, change its name, and then go from there. The back end, there's all these 31 are all named after mayors of San Francisco. I live in San Francisco. There's about 20 other ones that are open namespace, plus other cities, other mayors, or just random words. But it's it's really great because this is something that when I used to like build a lot of sites, I would have to like start building a layout just when I get it. Now I can just find the layout that's closest, and maybe I adjust some widths and CSS or something. But I'm not having to reinvent this wheel every time. I just use this stuff. And for distributions, this is killer because because you have a distribution based on Panopoly, you know all these these versions are already going to be there, so you can roll out a feature like a news feature or you want an FAQ feature, you can roll out a lot of stuff, and you have a bunch of layouts that you can depend to be there to display on your site, and that's really valuable. And so I've seen plenty of sites that get built with Panopoly or distributions based on Panopoly that just use these layouts and have a really good time of it and don't have to spend a lot of time hustling and bustling with the CSS, and, 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 that's, and that's a big deal. It saves you a lot of time. And again, you get this all for free out of the box. Search, uh, something near and dear to my heart. I, gotten to Drupal in library school, sort of organizing a lot of information. And when I saw Drupal, I loved it because it had taxonomy, and taxonomy was really big and made me very happy as a librarian. The search system, however, did not. The Drupal core search is not a particularly strong search solution. It's designed to work on a lot of different platforms, including shared hosts and stuff with low resources, so it's not doing a lot, which is good for everyone to use. 
But like this is 2013, we have a lot of extra cool technologies. We have Search, um, Search API and Apache Solar that will both back into powerful solar services. And a lot of hosting platforms like Aqua and Pantheon and, and beyond have solar already built in. And one of the great things Monopoly does is it says, well, look, let's, let's do something better with, with Search to just Drupal core Search. Let's override it and let's automatically integrate with Solar if it's there, or use Search API DB to simulate sort of faceted search and some relevancy stuff and other things. And so you can actually, with Panoply, turn it on and you get a search page that's pretty advanced already, that you can do fastening based on content type, or it's easy to put in one for taxonomy or date or whatever you want. And this makes the experience better, because you can build a great site, you can have great content, but if people can't find it, it becomes a little tricky. Panoply helps you do this. And, you know, one of the great things also architecturally about Panoply is that because it has a bunch of sub-modules, there's a Panoply search module that, that powers this thing, as you might imagine. If you don't use search or don't need it, just turn it off, and you won't have to have any of the dependencies or run any of that code. And that's something that like, sort of just helps, helps, uh, helps uh, level up people's sites. And for distributions that need search or sites just that need search, you have a lot of options. Probably the most useful feature right now in Panoply is the WYSIWYG. Uh, this is, you know, definitely very time intensive to get set up. I'll give a little demo of it sort of uh, during the demo phase of this talk. But in general, like, setting up a WYSIWYG in Drupal is not that easy. Um, I mean, it's, you can set, you can download the library and set the WYSIWYG module and, like, turn on some options and, and you can get it to pop up. But you run into a lot of problems really quickly with WYSIWYG. Um, one of the most common is security problems that in order to, like, really have a what you see is what you get, but not allow any HTML to go through. You have to write very specific rules to filter out certain tags and certain attributes on various tags. And, and it, it's sort of a mess if you're trying to do it. One of the things probably does is it already it gives you input filter rules in Drupal that are like are, that are secure so that you can still have a pretty rich WYSIWYG experience, but you don't have to like open up full HTML to all users, which, which can create a lot of security problems. It also integrates a lot of cool sort of WYSIWYG extension modules, like the caption filter module that does this caption thing we have on the right here. It integrates uh, this cool little like uh, kitchen sink plugin so that you can pop the buttons and hide the bottom bar. It's, you know, integrates with media modules. You can use videos or images um, as part of the WYSIWYG. And it's got uh, some other stuff sort of on the back end uh, to really sort of help to make sure these URLs are good. And, and this whole experience is really nice. And if you toggle it in WYSI now, you can toggle it to an HTML mode, and it uses the market up editor, so you can sort of see some tags. And this is the kind of stuff that you can spend a lot of time making sure that you can get a WYSIWYG online. Panoply just gives you this for free, and it's supported and extended, and it's the kind of thing that just sort of a lot of your content there is really like, and it's something you don't have to do sort of, you know, in the few hours you have spare, you just get a, a sort of A plus, play plus effort right out of the box. And that's something that's optionally included. You can probably WYSIWYG a module, you can pull it into your distro, or you can use it, and you have this kind of thing. Um, and this is really great, and I think helps helps people put stuff on the internet without having to write code, even HTML. And so that's that's super great. Um, the WYSIWYG exists in a larger content editing page. So this is the admin section. Um, you've got the WYSIWYG obviously on the left, but you have stuff on the on the, on the right that are sort of attributes. So you know, who's the author? Is it published? Should it be? revisioned, um, does it have a featured image, what are the attributes on that, and then some save buttons. And this is something that this is looking to look a lot like how, how sort of the D8 admin experience will look, and this is something that some admin themes already provide, but probably provides this in the form of a panel, so you can change it if you want. But it's the kind of thing that I think helps to sort of, you know, emphasize the stuff that's important. Like, you'll see, like, the title is, like, twice as big as the other stuff, because, like, titles matter, and titles are actually quite big on the page. And that having that kind of connection is, is very, very important. That's one of the things that I think makes, makes Monopoly a sort of like stronger and better sort of distribution because you have all of your content editors using something that, that's, a little, that's a little more sort of, sort of awesome. Landing pages are something that uh, Monopoly also makes really easy. For folks who have used panels, um, I'm, I love panels a lot. Um, Panoply has a bunch of panels modules in it, Panelizer, PM existing pages, panels itself, panels, breadcrumbs. Um, and it's something that you, you can use panels if you've used it on an admin level to like make sort of complicated landing pages. But the problem is it's sort of a pain to use. Like the backend admin interface has a lot of buttons, a lot of confusing terminology, and it, and it, and it does a lot for that complexity. But for a normal user that just says, I want to make a page, 
on my site and I want to have some control over it, it actually can be really hard. One of the things that Panoply makes easy is that when you hit add content, it actually gives you an option to create a landing page. And that landing page is something that on the back end it's going to be panels, but you never have to go to the panels back end. It just, you just type the name of the thing in, the menu path you want, and it just sort of goes on its merry way. And that becomes really awesome because you can quickly create these pages. And then Panoply also lets you customize them. So you can actually turn around and, you know, hit a button on the screen, which I'll demo to customize the page. You can change the layout, drag stuff around, change their style plugins. And you can really have a pretty good time making sure that, like, you know, as an end user, you can sort of make the landing page look and feel the way that you really want. And that's the kind of sort of empowerment that I think technology can do really well if it's put in the hands of people who um, have really great ideas but may still be learning some of the technical stuff or just don't want to be bothered because it's much more fun just to say, hey, I want to go add stuff to a page. Let me click a link on the you know, add button and let me ask you what kind of thing I want to do. I want to add an image to, say, a sidebar or an image to a header bar in Drupal. Like, it can be a pain to sort of do that. you got to, like, get the image in there, and you got to figure out how to make a block and make sure the reach is the right way, and then you have to, like, get visibility rules so it shows up there, and you have to, like, make sure it's got responsive properties if you need the image to be that way. And just to, like, even see the thing takes a little bit of, like, you know, monkeying around on the Drupal backend. Um, probably makes it easy. Every place on that you see, every sort of, like, blue region that you can add stuff, you can pick and you can add whatever you want. Spotlights, tables, maps, um, videos, uh, if the internet works. Um, and, uh, and that kind of stuff is, is really helpful. So as a sort of site building, page building tool, there's a lot of value. And for folks that are using Panoply to sort of build their own distribution, this is the kind of thing you can hand over to someone who's not super technical and say, go make pages. They click add here, and then they get an option of stuff they can add. This is all very understandable as someone who doesn't know any Drupalisms. Because I know, as like, if I'm not a Drupal person, I still know what a table is. I still know what a map is, an image is, what text is. Um, you tell me to add a block or add a panel page manager or handler or something, I mean, forget about it, right? So this, is, this makes it easy, and this is, these are very commonly good tool stuff that, that makes stuff a lot better. Because you want to let people customize things. You want to let people look at something on the, on the right as a preview to see sort of what it is. This is a view in this case. And you want to be able to give them various options. So I can change the number of things in the view. I can change which field show. I can change the order of the title. And I can, in some cases, even change the attributes of what I get, what content type, what taxonomy term. And I can do that all from a front-end interface. doesn't require me to go to the back end of Drupal. And it's the kind of thing that you can use to make really really powerful distribution stuff that people can actually use as end users to build sites and have a really great time with it. And this is why sort of Panoply provides this really great guide to distribution development. And it's why there's a bunch of different folks who are using Panoply to actually build sort of, you know, more impressive and higher level functionality. And that's, you got, you know, small stuff. There's a, I was chatting in the hallway, there's a, a distribution called Push Tape that's based on a lot of this stuff for music professionals to spin up a quick band site. There's a distribution for restaurant tiers based on Panoply. You can spin up a restaurant site, you get a menu and some customizations. And you've got a lot of universities that use have sort of their own internal Panoply versions, where it's Panoply plus university theme and single sign-on. And you've got even open atrium for Drupal 7. There's been some nice buzz and uh, bird feather and a lot of great work coming out of phase two to make open atrium two really awesome. That's also based on Panoply because those kinds of page building tools that you see are really helpful for people who want to make sites, but also want to make distributions. It's also great because probably because it's based on chaos tools and panels, takes this really strong plugin approach to site development, which is extremely similar to how Drupal 8 is handling a lot of its plugin system. So in the sort of Panoply world, you want to make a layout, you make a C-Tools plugin for a layout. You want to make an access rule or visibility rule, you make a plugin at C-Tools. You want to make a style, like, like option to theme some like region, add a, add a C tool style plugin. You want to add a piece of content, like add a C tools content type that is a plugin for content. You want to have, you know, views exposed through this way, you add a C tools content pane through views and you get this kind of functionality. And because everything is a plugin, everything can be extended and easily modified. And that kind of consistent architecture is really, really important and is the kind of thing that as site developers and as people who are trying to make distributions, it makes it really easy. Um, I've done a lot of Drupal sites, and it's really easy when you just like take a, like a bunch of, of wireframes, you sort of just like highlight stuff and say, this is a layout plugin, this is a content plugin, this is a view, and you can just sort of build all of them. 
make a library of components to sort of see stuff and then go from there. You can like, go from nothing, basically, to a, a great Drupal site monopoly in a matter of minutes. And that itself is super awesome. Um, and I'll show, you, I'll show you a bunch of this stuff in the demo portion. But in general, I mean, this is, these are sort of the main highlights of monopoly. And it, hopefully it helps, and hopefully the kind of things that folks in this room could see to be really great for yourself building sites or your, your friends running site building. What it's not, what Panoply isn't, is it's not a, you know, it's not like necessarily something that you're going to have and just have that. You're going to want to put in your own content, your own themes, some other stuff. It, it's designed to be that base distribution, the thing that can help everybody else. And it just helps people to get out of the world and sort of marshal the modules and to get everything sort of set up. And that's why it's got a great guide for distribution development. There's a great, lot of great documentation at Drupal Org about how to use it, how to extend it, how to make apps or features that work really well within it, and that kind of thing where when you turn on Panopoly and add some of your own stuff, you can have a really great site. So say you like that, you like Panopoly, and you want to actually make, make a Drupal distribution. You want to have your own distribution. Maybe you're, a, maybe you're a, Drupal, a Drupal shop that every time you want to spin up a new version of a, for a client project, you want to have your own custom stuff. You want to use some of the Panoply stuff, but maybe not all. And you want to use, um, uh, and you want to use some of your own custom code. So the first thing you do is you sort of go on Drupal.org, you grab this Panoply base distribution starter kit. It's just uh, you know a couple files that you sort of you know change from starter kit to your name. And now you have a you know, info file, a make file, and a profile. And these are the sort of building blocks of building a Drupal distribution. For folks who have done it before, it should be pretty straightforward. For folks that are new, it's a lot like making a module or a theme. You just sort of put in some information about your profile, your info, and, and your make file, and, uh, and you can get going. The starter kit will obviously say, here, include the Panopoly, uh, the Panopoly modules and dependencies. But the idea is that you can extend it to do your own stuff. So, an obvious extension is you don't want to use that Drupal Blue responsive Arctic theme. You need to have your own theme. Here's a sort of a couple, a couple lines of code here to, to set up a specific, in this case, university theme. It's got like the branding with, from the university communications department that it has a common header. It's got a common footer, some common styles. And a lot of folks who maybe have a common theme but don't have a distribution might be really interested in this because you can take the starter kit, take your theme, add these two lines of code to actually make sure it turns on when you spin it up, and then you get this kind of thing um, just, just right there, and you have your theme enabled. So when you turn on the Drupal site, you install it. Instead of having to like get this like blue screen, you get something that looks like your, your shop or, or your university or your organization. And that's great. Two lines of code and a theme, and you can get it every time when you start up. Um, you'll also probably want to add a little bit of custom functionality to it. Panoply does do a lot out of the box, but there's plenty of other things people want and stuff that is pretty easy to do and add to a distribution so you can do it a million times if you want. What we've got in this case, these are just a couple quick uh, examples of stuff that you just put in a make file. These are a couple other modules that exist, so you can have like a, a CAS module to do single sign-on. If you're a university or a large organization that has an LDAP or Shibboleth or some sort of single sign-on solution, sometimes that can be a little tricky to set up. I mean, you've got some settings fields that have to be filled in. You need a couple modules to integrate. And it's not that hard. Just make a custom module that turns on those settings, and you include it, enable it, and then you'll have this whole thing hooked up. Same thing for uh, if you want to include sort of some feeds or some external data. Very straightforward. Throw a couple things in. And this is how you start building your, your distribution. You take Panoply as a base distribution, you add a theme, you add a little bit of custom functionality, and you can go whole hog on this. You can extend this and do a lot of extra stuff, but it's the kind of thing that is pretty straightforward to do um, once you have that kind of, you know, sort of awareness of what you want. And then you just build the thing, and you get this kind of distribution made. It can turn it from, like, you know, your ideas into an actual distribution in, uh, in a matter of minutes. It's something that can be easily packaged and can be easily turned into you know, a tarball or something. And as a Drupal developer, this is obviously pretty pretty great because I don't, now instead of downloading a tarball off Drupal.org that just has Drupal, I've downloaded a distribution that has my theme, some of my functionality, and um, all the stuff that Panoply gives, and I haven't had to do a whole lot to get that tarball. Um, of course, once I have a tarball, I just have to install Drupal, which is easy enough, I suppose. These are the install instructions from Drupal.org to get Drupal up and running. Um, and that's something that, you know, one of the, the pieces I work on at Pantheon is sort of how to make this process easier because we don't want to, you know, be in the ARG state. We actually want to have an easy way to get stuff online. So one of the things that I've worked on, which is pretty neat, which can sort of lead into the demo, 
is uh, we've got these new spin-up screens on Pantheon. So if you wanted to try, for example, the stuff I'm showing off today for Panopoly, it's easy enough. You can sort of go to go to our site, and you get a link to go uh, install Panopoly, and you sort of either create a Pantheon account right then and there, or if you have one, you sign in. You just go ahead and say, I want to name my site the way it is. Um, if the internet holds, it will sort of run you through a, a sort of si a bar that loads to actually set up the site. And it's, you know, the Pantheon world that gives you a lot of cool stuff on the development platform. But the important thing is that it sets you up with a site that has, um, that, uh, that already has the Panopoly code enabled and allows you then every time a new release comes out just to one click update. And this is the kind of thing that's like pretty important for people who are trying to figure out sort of how how to sort of, you know, keep keep up to date with stuff. Because that's a huge problem in the maintenance cycle uh, for folks if you build something to try to make sure that it's supported and maintained. Um, Pantheon provides a lot of that support for distributions. And that's sort of, you know, a lot of the work that I'm doing is to try to put these things together in a way that it makes it really easy. Because I want to, like, I want to see this world where we have double-digit percentages of, of, of websites running, you know, uh, on Drupal. And stuff that I think to get there, we need these distributions. We need people to, to sort of be able to say, hey, I can, you know, spin up something that, like, has my brand, has my custom functionality, and I can have a thousand of these things. And they're easy to spin up, they're easy to maintain, and I can just sort of, sort of, sort of go, go whole hog on that. So that's sort of generally where I'm coming from and what I try to spend a lot of my time working on. Um, but I can also go ahead and let's, uh, let's go ahead and show you guys sort of what this, what this all looks like. So I've spun up a couple instances uh, on my local environment just because I've done Drupal conference things long enough that um, I don't trust the conference Wi-Fi. Um, so hopefully we'll be fine. There is a YouTube bit of this demo I want to show, so that will need the internet, but looks like it's holding now, so that's great. Um, but otherwise, it's just straight up out of the box. I've got two versions of it, um, including this Miley Cyrus song. All right. So you guys can see great. Okay, so this is version one, and we'll just run through a couple of sort of quick examples, but I can show off some of the stuff I sent for features, and then um, in the Q&A or otherwise, I'm happy to sort of freestyle this. But in general, like, this is, so this is Panopoly out of the box. I've turned on a demo content module that comes with Panopoly as an app. Uh, it's helpful because you can actually sort of see what the site, you know, how a lot of Panopoly stuff works because you have content there. It's also a great model if you want to replicate it. Because the same functionality that makes this demo app would make a news app really easy, or it would make a, a, a profile app, or it would make like a, I think you app these things pretty straightforwardly. And I think the important thing that the slides don't really show is that every page has these options at the bottom to customize this page. And this is done by the Panels IP module, which is by, it's part of Panels. It's one of the best sort of Drupal modules because it takes in any landing page, any node, any user page, and it turns it into an object that you can actually customize right then and there, that it doesn't require you to go to the back end. So we'll go back to the, the home page, and I customize this page, and I immediately get these UI tools to actually change around this kind of thing. And it, it's, I mean, there's some obvious stuff, so I can, like, drag stuff around, which is, you know, pretty easy. And I can hit save or cancel, depending, depending on what I want. Um, I also have the ability to delete stuff if for some reason, you know, hey, I don't, I don't need to get to the search. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, site editors might want to do, site builders might want to do, especially if stuff comes to fault or if they want to change it later. The other cool bits are that, like, I can change the layouts of this page. So this pulls off the layouts I showed you. We got 31 of them. But to actually switch, it's just a matter of clicking, clicking to another one, saying, I'd rather have that layout. And it'll just, in real time, switch my layout for me. And it won't require me to actually go change any template files or deal with any CSS. It will just just go ahead and swap that one out. And for this is for the landing page, so it'll work that way. For nodes, it will either do it on a custom node basis, so just change this one node to be this way, or you can change all nodes of that type or all users of that role, whatever you want. That's one of the sort of values of this thing. And that's the kind of thing when you build a distribution, people want to change it from what the default is. This makes it easy and doesn't make them go, go on the back end. The other piece that's super helpful, and we've seen this a lot in the sort of higher ed space, is that a lot of higher ed organizations have some style palettes that need to be maintained for design, but they have a lot of users that want sites to look in different ways. So one of the plugins that you can add to this kind of stuff is you can add a style plugin. And this is a sort of quick example of some styles. 
So we've got the like, you know, this list of stuff that's default on the right. But I can go ahead and change the styles right here to actually have, you know, various backgrounds. These are from the Drupal at work style, uh, style guide. And I can sort of see what it looks like, make sure it's the kind of thing I want. And they're just theme functions that add some CSS classes or JavaScript or change the markup a bit. But it allows me to start to do stuff like this so I can actually change the visual appearance of my site without having to go and like do CSS or complicated stuff in the back end, let alone look at Drupal's markup, which is just, you know, can, can, be, can, be, can be a handful for sure. Um, and this is the stuff when you're building a distribution or you have your own theme, your themes can ship with several style plugins that do stuff like this. So you can make it, you know, have different visual looks. You can add a little highlight image. You can have it have a, you know, a slider, JavaScript expander, whatever you want. That's super great. You also get the ability for anything that's exported that comes as a view. Views, views is written by the same person who wrote panels. So if you're sort of using that kind of, uh, of world, it's really easy. You can hit, in Panopoly, you can hit customize, and you actually get this interface that looks like this. And this is basically a bunch of options that you would otherwise see in like the, that like airplane dashboard that is the views UI, uh, which has like considerably gotten better in the past couple of years, but can still be tricky, especially if you don't know a lot of the terminology. Panoply just exposes the stuff that's easiest because like I might only want to show, you know, the last two things. It gives me a nice little preview. I might not want to show the images, but I do want to show the teasers. I may want to show, you know, the author who posted them, maybe not. And that this is the kind of thing that I can switch a lot of options and add more options that I want in the back end, but require them to sort of, you know, have the end user only be presented with stuff that actually changes their experience. Um, and it's the kind of thing when you're building a Drupal product that becomes really easy. So if I'm something like Open Atrium, I want to let certain pieces of my distribution of my site be customized. I don't want to let other stuff be. So let me go turn on the right options push it through this UI and panels, and suddenly I have a, a much stronger experience. And that kind of stuff is, is, is really great. Um, the same thing will work for a bunch of the other pieces. It's, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward for that. You can also make new stuff, obviously, that landing page idea. This is something that Drupal 8 is going to do really well. So I can go ahead and do a landing page. So we can go ahead and, and try this. We'll do, a, um, we'll do a Portland one. And, um, you can just go ahead and say, hey, I want to add this page. I want to add to the menu on the top level, and I want it to be at slash Portland with that name. And this is going to go out, and for folks who've had to struggle through the panel's back end, let's not worry about that. Let's just make the page, and let's get you to start building. And this is the kind of thing where I showed some of this off yesterday, but it's, it's really valuable to understand that as a site builder, I want to make pages. I want to make my site look a certain way or be a certain way. I don't necessarily want to do a bunch of Drupal code to get there. I just want to hit add. I want to like find the stuff I have. So here's a library of some of my existing pieces that came with the demo module. You can add any of those, of course. Or maybe I just want to add this image. And I can go ahead and just grab the image. I got this Portland, Portland's test image there. Throw a caption in or all text I want and add it. And right then and there, I have an image on my page. I haven't had to go to like a files backend and a reference copy a part of a URL and hope that maintains itself. I just said, let's add that thing and make it really great. And then I can start to play around. So this is similar to what I showed yesterday, but it's sort of like, hey, let's go like change the layout. So now we have this other column. I've got responsive image properties on the images. So it sort of turned out that way. And I can go in and I can start to add um, the kinds of stuff that like a comp or, or something that, um, you know, a client might give me, or if I'm an end user, I'm just trying to make a website stuff that I want. I might have a conference or a symposium or something that needs a quick website or a quick web page. You know, I have, might have uh, some assets around images or, um, in this case, text. And why not just take a WYSIWYG and add some text? So this is uh, my favorite uh, veggie Ipsum for vegetarians. You can sort of grab. It's got a bunch of, of words for um, vegetables, which beats Latin. I did four years of Latin in high school. It was like not that much fun. I mean, watching Spartacus and stuff was good, but the, so the, the food words make me, make me a lot happier. But you can, you know, add text right there, and you don't have to worry about, like, you have the WYSIWYG, you can copy and paste some other stuff, and, and, and that's true. This is going to be true for all sorts of stuff. I can make spotlights, I can add videos, I can add tables, um, and that just sort of works. V videos are cool because it uses the media module, which is, um, Definitely a pretty cool module. I don't know what video that is. Let's hope it's reasonable. <laughs> um, uh, and it's cool. Media module is a great module. Um, 
Hey, William Shatner, Star Trek memory is perfect. Uh, and Media Module is cool because anything that I upload or, or select in this case from YouTube uh, will show up on um, uh, will show up in the media library. So when I go to other spots, I can reuse it. That's also a really important idea in Panopoly. You can sort of have a lot of stuff be reused. You can also readjust stuff. So maybe I want to have the video there and some text there, you know, and I can, I can start to have fun like this. And this is the kind of page building experience when I'm sort of sitting there and trying to like, hey, what kind of stuff should Drupal really be able to do? Like this is super important. And for a lot of distributions, they want stuff to work out of the box. They want it to be the kind of thing that it's supposed to be. But they also know that you're going to have to change it. You're going to have to extend it. And if you say, here's a distribution, but you can't do anything new with it, you don't have these customizations, a lot, it doesn't work very well. People want, people see really great stuff on the internet. They want it to be very much like them. Give them the tools and stuff works really well. The other sort of tools I just want to show quickly, we've got this nav bar module, which is going to be in D8 for admin experience. You can use it now in D7. Panoply obviously has it, but it's a pretty cool sort of admin experience. There's some Panoply specific settings just to adjust sort of some of the components you can see and, you know, you can turn on and off layouts and stuff if you want to customize, which is very cool. But you also have the sort of um, standard ad content item. And this is their content creation here for the page. I want to go add some text, I can do that. Um, if I want to go add an image, I can again use the media module and I can upload an image. So I go upload maybe that same one I used before. And it'll like, you know, uh, Add that to my files repository, have it managed in my files table, let me access it, add title text and stuff like that, pick its, its, um, pick it, pick its image style I want, and then I can sort of have it on the site and be able to do really neat stuff with it. Um, we've also got this image resize module, which is super great. I can actually adjust the size of this thing, and Drupal will automatically cut it, crop it to be just that size. You don't have to deliver something to the, to the, the end user that's not as big. We go ahead and we maybe add a, a caption. So this is PDX, yay, and we'll float. And then this is the kind of experience that, like, this is, by the way, like the WordPress editor. It's the same editor as WordPress, almost the same button placements, same kind of caption filter. And WordPress has 10 times the installs Drupal has. And one of the big reasons is that WordPress does something out of the box that's super awesome. It, like, makes you have a killer blog. And you get a WYSIWYG, and you get page management tools, and you get admin interfaces, and you don't have to worry about it. And, you, and things are simple, like you only see this top bar, and you can go see more buttons if you want. But when you start saying heading three, like people don't necessarily understand that. And the simplicity of the whole thing is a, is a really, really, really valuable thing. And that's something that as a sort of site builder and someone who does a lot of work with distributions, the easier the better. Because even if you've done Drupal a long time, there's a bunch of stuff that can be a pain. And if you're new to Drupal and don't understand the Drupalisms, you start throwing people in the back end. You ask them to like learn Drupal. I mean, you got to take classes, read books, and come to events like this just to really get your head around this. And that I think is bad. It's, it holds Drupal back. It, it makes it so you have to be a good developer to have a good Drupal site. And I don't think that's how it should be. I think you should be able to spin up a distribution, have it easily on the scene and then make the kind of like content changes. It's like ultimately what makes your site different than someone else's, you know? Most Drupal sites don't have complicated technology that like is secret to them and stuff that like they just have to do to make it work. And one of the great things on Drupal is there's all these contrib modules where people contribute back. Distributions are a good way to sort of aggregate those stuff together. Panoply in particular, take the best of the contrib space, put it together in a way that adds admin experiences. So you can have stuff like there's a safe draft module in Panoply. So I can actually go ahead and like, you know, publish my content if I want it live or save it as a draft. And that's something that are right there in the action buttons. It's not like a hidden checkbox in a field set at the bottom of the page. So like if you don't know what that is, you don't really know. And it's next to something called sticky and something called the, what is that? And it's like called front page, put it on front page, which like doesn't work if your front page is not the default, which why would it be? Because the default is just a list of notes. And um, this is the kind of thing that like when you start building Drupal sites, you know, it can make it can make this kind of stuff awesome. And that's, so that's sort of probably straight. And that's the kind of thing that like, these are the, real, the sort of tools people, people have to go um, do stuff. But we also have, and this is a, a distribution of Panoply, um, but this is with, uh, for another university. And it's like, hey, why, you know, why just have the, the blue, turn on your theme, have your single sign on, and then when you hit customize uh, the content for the various pages, they actually have, you know, we can go ahead and, and, and change the styles. So I have the demo ones, but I also have some very specific branded ones from a specific university. 
And this is the kind of stuff that, like, when you want to give people Drupal, if you're an organization where someone's like, I need a Drupal site, like, give them something with a bunch of styles, a bunch of layouts, and a bunch of tools so they can actually make really awesome pages and not require sort of them to have to learn Drupal and go through a bunch of classes and, and, and do all that. I mean, Drupal's great. You should learn it, and it's definitely worth the time. But it's the kind of thing where just from a site building perspective, you know, the sooner you get people building their content in, the happier they'll be and the easier it is. And that's what I work on at Pantheon. I try to make these distributions really great, and Pantheon tries to make hosts really great. And that the easiest and the, like, the world I want to live in is one where like, you can have an awesome Drupal site as easy. You can have a Facebook site. And that's the kind of thing you just sort of spin up. It takes a, a few minutes. You pick a few options, and then you're just drag and drop in your page. And that's what Panopoly is trying to do specifically. So if you're looking to build a Drupal site, use Panopoly. And that's what um, this sort of base distribution idea is trying to do for everyone. So that if you want to have your own distribution, your own flavor of Drupal, um, check out the starter kit on Drupal.org on how to set it up. Come talk to me after this or, you know, email me or be in the issue at Panopoly. I'd love to figure out how to make people have really great distros. And um, I'll definitely get some questions, but thanks for sticking around to see everything and hope you check it out. Uh, my name is Matt Cheney, and this has uh, been a talk on Panopoly. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to you can come up here. Or there's a mic. I don't know how much time we have left. But I wouldn't feel fine that people go, go have a beer or go to dinner. It's almost 6. If your question's on managing dependencies for modules, I can just preempt it. And that them. is my question. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, one, th one thing that a lot of this brings up is having modules and making sure they're the right, uh, the right versions and making sure their dependencies are handled. One thing Drupal does really poorly is in its sort of install process, it doesn't check dependencies when it installs stuff as part of distribution. There's some code actually in the starter kit that we have that will actually go in and say, if I'm trying to install a module, check the dependencies of that module to make sure that those get installed. It's like a, it's in Panoply Core, it's like a five line thing. And that's sort of the workaround I have to handle dependency checking for install profiles. Just to be a little more specific about that, so um, if a security update is released for a module that um, Penelope requires, yep. do you recommend updating the module discreetly, or do you recommend actually pulling in a new, and then, I mean, waiting for you to update the distribution and then pulling the whole thing in? Yeah, gotcha. So Penelope shapes a bunch of modules, gets updated pretty regularly. When there's a new update that comes out, um, that's a choice you have. Like, definitely a security case for the security vulnerability affects you. One of the cool things in the Drupal architecture is that all the Panopoly code, it's all in slash profile slash Panopoly, or if you have a dist another base distribution slash profile slash your distribution. And so if you need to update, say Ctools has an update that comes out, you can download the new version of Ctools, throw it in sites all modules, and Drupal will actually prefer that version over the one in the profile. And so that's an easy way to actually update your site without having to break the distribution. And that's just a choice. You can wait for Panopoly to come out with new releases. We do that pretty often. But um, it's the kind of thing where it's sort of up to, up to the individual people on if they need to upgrade or not. Awesome. Next question. Um, first off, thank you very much You're for welcome. the talk and, and your work. Um, my question is, do you have a recommendation for a good base theme? Yes. So if you're interested in base theme, the, a really great one that works with Panopoly but is based on True Bootstrap is called Radix. R-A-D-I-X. Um, that's the base theme for Open Atrium now, and it's getting a lot of love just in general. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's pretty well documented, and it's designed to be a base theme that can be extended in the same way. And um, it's, it'll be bundled in the next version of Panoply for people to try too. But um, you can go on Drupal.org now and get it, R-A-D-I-X, and uh, it's, a, it's a good way to get started. There are plenty of other good base themes, like um, in the space end is obviously really great, Omega adaptive theme. All of those are good. Um, Radix just has some specific cool panels and Panoply stuff, which is why I like it. And it's Twitter Bootstrap, which is also a great, great library. So. Okay, thank you. Of course. Yeah, and also, I, I love Panoply. I've used it on some projects, and so thank you very much for that. Um, I do wonder if you've been following the, the development of Drupal 8 and how you see the eventual upgrade path on that, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of modules in there, and, you know, the more modules you have, the more risk there is is to do it. Yeah, so I definitely am up on Drupal 8. And one of the great things is that a lot of the ways that Panopoly is sort of thinking about Drupal and thinking about how pages and layout should work as plugins, very similar to D8. Uh, it also helps that, you know, for the Scotch initiative for blocks and layouts, which is 
comply with this and what's relevant for. Sam Boyer is a co-maintainer of panels. He's a co-maintainer and co-lead on that. Chris uh, Eclipse GC does C tools. He's on that. So a lot of these concepts are going to be in D8. Um, in general, the plan for D8 is that the core stuff in Panoply, a lot of it's already going to be in Drupal core. So the WYSIWYG, the like uh, layout system, the like blocks anywhere kind of stuff. That should just be stuff that's code that we don't even need to worry about except for the data. And the data model is not the same, but it's close enough that I think writing upgrade paths for all Panoply sites would be actually pretty easy to do. And that's one of the things that for DA planning we're working on. For the actual module set, um, a lot of the modules in Panoply are, are more or less optional. Like a lot of the admin stuff and a lot of the sort of extra things are stuff that like you can have say draft, it's a great module, but if you don't have it for D8, like Panoply will still, will still be a D8 version without it. The really the only thing that I think is deal breaker that's going to need to be done for D8 is actually building this, this IPE sort of page building uh, tool. That the D8 stuff, as far as I can tell, it depends how much dev will actually get done by the, by the freeze, but um, this kind of admin UI is something that will be possible to build in D8, but won't be included. D8 will have a lot of APIs, but that's a lot of tools. So this will be the biggest piece of development to do. But the hope with D8 is that a lot of the other modules we need, things like views or C tools or libraries module, those are those are moving into core in ways that like, you know, I, I don't need to have a jQuery update anymore because I have a new version of jQuery. And so I've got a list in my head of the modules that are sort of do or die. The page building tools are the biggest one, but because Panoply does a lot of stuff like D8, the upgrade patch should be pretty easy, and I'm hoping. But your upgrades are always hard, so don't quote Thank you. <laughs> too much. Thank you. Hi, um, thanks for your presentation. I found the admin looks incredibly useful. Um, I work for a company that does very, very custom project work, and we've recently, we've tried all sorts of solutions, and the admin just looks like it's a huge improvement from what we've been using. Um, basically, the question is, we're, we're, we basically have a custom theme that uses foundation. Um, we, we customize a lot of the HTML. Um, I just have some concerns with um, is there a way to use Panoply and, and have the high level of customization, or do you, I mean, I'm, I'm just not sure exactly how much, if we went with that, how much we would be able to customize it and still allow them to do a lot of the drag and drop stuff and, and a lot of that. Yeah, so good question. Um, I would say that in general Panoply, there's a lot of customization that's possible. So like, this is, it's all Drupal, it's all just con config that can be changed or altered or things like that. And that one of the patterns we've seen a lot is that you can actually include the pieces of Panoply that you really want. So if you like the admin, menu, like the WYSIWYG, you can include that. You know, if you don't, the search thing isn't what you do, you don't even need to include that. And that once you get all of those though, it, all of this stuff is, if you sort of understand the panel C tools world, is easy to customize. So that admin page, for example, that itself is a panel, and you can go into panels, and you can change the order, or you can change the layout. Like, you have that power. And Panoply's sort of philosophy is provide a same default, but allow people to change. And almost everything here is and can be changed. And that um, one of the great, also, development patterns is that it, they're all featureized in here. If you want to have a version of this that's a little different, there's a module called Features Override. You turn on Features Override, you say, hey, like, I want to make a new node edit page layout. Export that in my over it feature, and then it'll all just work and you can deploy it. It's very straightforward. But yeah, everything's extendable. You just have to sort of get into the, you know, the sort of, sort of panel stuff. But there's a lot of great documentation on the Panoply Drupal work thing that shows about it. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I enjoyed it. Um, I was wondering if there's not a theme, but just a grid that is built to work with Panoply specifically for panels and views. Yeah. So. The, the Panoply layouts, there's 31 of them. They're using a sort of 960 grid approach. Um, there's nothing in there that, I, I mean, I think it's good. I don't, it's nothing super magical. In general, like, you actually have a lot of flexibility. Like, everything in that sort of main, in the theme world, everything in the content region is controlled by Panoply, and that you can use any kind of theme grid system you want. We use 960 for the layouts just because that's what, we, that's what we sort of knew when we did them. I mean, it's, they're fine, but I don't think it's, it, you can do anything you want. A lot of it's just picking the right layout, make sure the right theme, but using grid system itself is good because a lot of the Panoply and panel stuff, it's sort of in that blocky kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you have a lot of flexibility for sure. Sweet. Thanks. Awesome. Hi. Uh, just a quick question. I installed it while you were talking, actually, so awesome. it's pretty easy to install. Um, but uh, when you click the plus sign when you're trying to add something, can you add, I, I, 
I couldn't find the ability to add like a view that I created. Just yep. I saw the ones that you had already done on the side there. And I was just wondering if, if I was missing something or if you have to turn. Um, like I added a new view, but it didn't show up here. And I yeah, yeah. Up. So the the trick here is that views have views in Drupal have a bunch of display types. Um, and there's a block and page and stuff. There is a display type in views called content pane, um, which is labeled totally different than what it should be because it's for panels. And if you make a view display that says content pane, it will and it'll when you add that, it'll actually prompt you says give me a name and give me a category, and then it'll show up in this list. So the category in this case is demo. This is these are three displays for a view. You want to add one new? You just add a new uh, content pane in views, and it works. Um, and that's the trick. And it's, uh, it is a little weird, but um, once you get that, it, and then you have a bunch of options too. It views that says, okay, do you want to let, do you want the fields to be able to be selected? Do you want the sort selected? Do you want the number of items? And all of that sort of plays nice with panels. So yeah, that's the trick. So, thank you. A couple more questions. Uh, yeah, as, as everybody's thinking about uh, responsive design, there there are different approaches for choosing what bits of content show up in different uh, for different media. Uh, do you have a recommended approach within Panoply? Yeah. So one thing which I didn't demo. Uh, so those. Uh, so the, the site actually is responsive in some ways. Um, it's we're using responsive Bartek, uh, which is a dev theme. But if you have a theme that supports responsive design, all the layouts and all the core components of Panoply all have responsive properties. Um, the way it works now is a pretty standard, just like you know, let's just remove the floats and have the content flow, the images resize, and the text change. But one of the really cool features of, of panels is that you actually have the ability with these visibility rules to decide what kind of content gets shown to what kind of device. So there's a really great um, module I was chatting earlier about with folks that are called panels breakpoints that actually you can specify what breakpoints you want to use for your responsive design. And then you can actually have the system, the panel system not show certain sidebar elements or other things to uh, to like mobile devices. And this is really important because a lot of folks who are responsive will just like display none, the sidebar if it's on a phone, but you're still downloading all that code and in some cases even getting the images. And that, that's the kind of thing that can take a lot of time. If you use a like, panel's breakpoint, or there's a few other kinds of, of solutions that actually will integrate a visibility rule in C tools, such as another plugin, you can actually not show stuff to mobile devices and that works out fine. Um, in general, responsive stuff in Panoply is it's, we've got responsive layouts and we've got responsive image, images with CSS, but um, there's some definitely cooler stuff that's going to D8, and in general, that's a, a pretty hot and like innovative area. So there is an issue in the Panoply issue queue about make more stuff responsive, and that has a bunch of recommendations and people sort of talking, mostly me sort of saying something and then rethinking it a week later and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, I check out panels breakpoints for for that kind of stuff, and then just look at some of the CSS properties and Panoply images and Panoply theme. Thank you for the presentation. Awesome. I had a question sort of as a follow-up to what you were talking about before with the templates using the, the grid system. Because uh -huh. you had mentioned a theme that you recommended that used the Twitter bootstrap. Yep. And I was wondering if the, the templates for Panoply use the Twitter bootstrap in any way. The templates for Panoply do not use the Twitter bootstrap. Um, and that's in smart because we sort of started before then. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, before it got super big, the Radix stuff does though. Um, and that actually Radix has its own sort of layout module called Radix Layouts. Oh. And that actually has, um, uh, these are all Panoply like approved like layouts that actually work with the Twitter Bootstrap stuff. And if you're into big Twitter Bootstrap and Twitter Bootstrap's cool, check out this instead. It actually has a lot of the same layouts you see in Panoply, but with uh, but with the Twitter bootstrap and then under Panoply layouts, you actually just have the ability to sort of choose like, you know, which ones are enabled and disabled. So you can say, oh, only turn on the blue ones and then you just have Twitter bootstrap. That's um, fantastic because I've had trouble before with sites where like, some things were using the Twitter bootstrap and others weren't and then it like, it all creates a bunch of problems. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, this is a, a totally good solution. Thank you. All right. Last question. Uh, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, this is a really slick product, and um, it, it's definitely really cool. But um, so this is kind of a devil's advocate question. But I'm wondering if you caught the, the keynote from this morning from uh, Karen 
Oh yeah, why? Why? Uh, yeah, why so I'm wondering. Big is. Yeah, if you can <laughs> just you give me your response to that, um, just so you know, I have an intelligent <laughs> response when I when I try and sell Panoply to my organization because. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just like I'm wondering, like, are we reinforcing to content creators that, you know, you control how things look and that is not a sustainable uh, solution, or at least, you know, some people think that. Yeah. Um, so I'd say in general, and that's a good closing question, honestly. Um, I mean, I believe that people should have, like, the website they want, and people should have the ability to customize and change the stuff they have. And then I think that WYSIWYG and, like, some of the more general kind of tools, it does let people sort of open it up you know, to whatever, and it does try to make, like, the website, like, a Microsoft Word browser or something like that. But, like, these are, like, models of content creation that people understand. This is the kind of stuff when you say, how do you get information out in your organization? People write it in emails with rich text. They put it in Microsoft Word documents. They make PDFs. And telling them that, like, that's not how you do it on the web. You have to learn this better way because, like, we're, like, you know, we, we have, like, new ideas. I can think... If, you, if the idea is good, that's awesome, but if it's, you're just trying to force people a different way, it's hard. People, it's hard enough to learn technology, hard enough to learn Drupal straight up, and I think having people have familiarity with their tools is, is one of the strongest ways to improve accessibility and usability of them. And I think I love the world where like, there's better ways to get caught in line than WYSIWYG, but that at the end of the day, people understand that concept in a, a pretty important way, and I think that's not going to change anytime soon. And I think that... Um, but one of the good things, and I think one of the things Copley helps to do is it does give you alternate methods. It says, well, you can use WYSIWYG to style stuff however you want, or you can add more structured style plugins that do a particular kind of thing. And I think we can move in that direction too. But I think for where we are right now, I mean, I, I like theory. I mean, I, I went to school, I do some philosophy, but I also feel like you got to get people what they want. People want WYSIWYG. They want to put their content online. They know how it works. And, we have trouble just getting people like write their thoughts online and do it. That's that's what I said. I want Panoply to let people put their ideas on the internet because I think it's a healthier and better place when people talk. And let's not let the tools get in the way. Let's make them as good as possible and familiar as possible. Fair enough. Thanks, Matt. All right. Well. Well, thanks everyone, and have a great DrupalCon.